Okay. All right, making some good progress on the clothing here. So we're not almost done with the pants, not quite finished. We're getting there. So I'd like to make a pocket. Like that, just a little bucket to solidify. That way it'll catch the light a little bit, and then we'll have the uh, actual seam here right along the length of the uh, leg. That should help kind of sell the idea of it. Now we need some belt loops. So there's two belt loops on the front. On each side, so I guess there's six loops total. Three on the left, three on the right. <clears throat> oh, we got a pair of pants. Pants, pants, loops. One, two. Okay, so there's five. One, two. I guess we would want. We don't want to have to include a belt. We won't for now. Okay. So we have the loop in the back here. One loop created. We have the side loop. Does that line up with the pants? No, it's a bit past it. Uh, okay. Basically, it'd be this one. Move it over a little bit, actually. I'm going to crease that. 
and bevel it. Doop, doop, doop. The next one is right the pocket. Okay. I may as well have kept that other one, but that's sort of fine. Well, All right, there we go. Next for pants. Next for pants. Add the bouton. Let's take this. Myself to do this a little bit differently. Bevel. Uh, yeah. Beveling is a little bit easier compared to indenting sometimes. In fact, I probably could have beveled again right there. But this will work just Kind of bring it in just a little. Cursor right here, select this. Point six oh, S. Bam. Nice circle. Same with this one, Shift Alt S. Boom. All right. There we go. That looks pretty good. A 
little too baggy on the bottom. I feel disproportionate. So we're going to just kind of squeeze them a little. And that should be pretty close now. All right. Next are the shoes. Okay. I already got most of the main shape. S X zero S There we go. Just like this to kind of continue. A little bit better. Probably could have just bet out the edge. I would have gotten the exact same result. Gotta keep in mind, bell is something I am underutilizing. did mess up here because this also needs to level out, but we can just go ahead and grab this top shape, rip it. And we can bridge there. Ellie Vega. One Hi, Sam from Oklahoma. Ellie, 
Dominic from ICTC class. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. We're just kind of chilling right now, working on some shoes. Hope you're having a great, what's today? Friday. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Do a cut there. Right now we're working on an avatar. So this is the char character we'll be making. Here's what we have so far. Thank you. Yeah. A few little outfits. Already got a lot of the texture painting done. We have the character in Unity. Always looks a little different in Unity, but that's just how it goes. Still, a little bit more modeling to do, then we'll be there. How's your your Blender learning going? Blender journey. <laughs> Blender journey. I collapse these. Oh, no. What I want is for this to run up there. So I do this M at last, and that as well. And then I can just dissolve these. Boom. Pretty good. Made a game in Unity. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, that's really cool to hear. Fun stuff. Feel free to, to share any links or anything if you have that. Still a long ways to go. <laughs> That's how it is with games. It's just one of those kind of tends to keep growing. <laughs> The curse, perhaps blessing too. All right, so we got that shoe looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and also here, pump up that, the heel of the shoe. There should be a cut. Again, we should utilize the bevel. Favorite tool. Wow. And grease those. And are you both working on the game? Or is this a Dominic that was saying working on the game? We've got these laces, and then the heel of the shoe goes higher than what I had on the back. And then we've also got the kind of Ellie's working on it for class. Very cool. Gotcha. Oops. Fun to have partner working on it with you. My brother and I wanted to make some video games um, recently. We never got around to it, but we had a lot of fun brainstorming it. Yeah. 
really love to make some kind of D and D related games. That would be my long term goal. Oops, this should go right across. You bet, Brent's room is the fun part. It is. It really is. So we'll do the same thing I just did before. We'll take the section we want to use and rip it, move it back. Close the gap. Is this for a client? Yes. Uh, so they're, they're looking to have a, a VR chat avatar made, which is where I uh, get most of my work uh, for VR chat avatars. Uh, and yeah, so they're looking for kind of a uh avatar of themselves hmm I did this one together so differently Gotcha. And at last. There we go. Well, happy Friday. What are we working on today? Still working on Kraken at the moment. Also, happy Friday to you as well, Oaks. Thanks for coming by. So close to the weekend. <laughs> um, so, just kind of further down the line on working on our avatar. Oops. Right now we're getting all the modeling done for the jacket and stuff. Oops. Hopefully we'll have all the modeling done today, and then next Monday and Tuesday we'll just be texturing and then rigging. That's the goal. Okay, we'll actually take this portion and rip it. This. Bam. And uh oh. Where'd it go? These ones. So easy to lose track. And then bridge those and close it this way. Bam. Just so we can close that off a little ways. Hey, very cool. Okay. 
and I kind of want to make this curve here a little bit nicer. All right. So I'm going to just close off the top here. Boom. Extrude, shrink these ways. Close and close. Then I think we're basically just going to make a sock. Like that. So this will be the start of the sock right here. Or middle that. Bada boom. This will be the start of the stock. Wow. Wow. All right. Now we'll grab this loop. Bring it in and down. Close these little edges. Boom. And boom. That didn't work out. Why did not? Sometimes Blender has some trouble closing things. But it looks like I just have an extra vertex there. What the heck? What the heck? There we go. Should have known something was wrong, but I couldn't select that whole ring. All right. There we go. Shoe with sock. We're not done yet, but some good progress. Okay. I'm going to make this really ginormous. Do, do, do. There's a little lip here that I don't think I quite have on mine. My shoe. No, I do. Okay. The laces. That interesting. <laughs> hmm. I'll probably simplify that a bit with my texturing. Just try to make the texturing. Ah. And then one, two, three, four, probably five different little sections here. Maybe we'll do that after applying the subdivision. Yeah, I we'll have to. Otherwise, it'll be a little too challenging. And also too 
Either way, I'm going to have to do some more to it after I apply the subdivision. Oops. But level that out. Bring that in a little. Almost like that. Pretty close. Hiking shoes. All right. How the heck are we going to do those laces? So it's kind of like this loop. All right, I think we can do that. Let's go to make a curve. Delete this one. Easiest way. That shoe again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, buckle my shoe, <laughs> three, four, I, don't, I forget how the rest of that rhyme goes. One, two, three. to subdivide like one at the, the edges here. Okay. 
And just so we can see them a little easier, let's start putting the geometry on them. Bevelin, oops. Right about there. And they kind of just, oh, they get tucked down. Now I could do that, tuck them down. need to raise one of these up. Let's go ahead and add a mirror as well. A mirror. difference with these is the other the ones in the reference look a lot more taut. They look like they're getting pulled. I think we just need to shrink these ones to do that. Just looked like there was tension in the string. Also, they're a little flat. Shoelaces are kind they're not, a lot of shoelaces aren't perfectly circular either. So I could do that. I could turn down the depth a little bit more. And then turn on the extrude. And then just change the tilt. 90 degrees, a little bit more. Wait, just keep them round. <laughs> Take it back. Round it is. All right, so now let's go here. Actually, let's look at his shoes. Looks like he's not using that top button, just a knot in front. How do you tie your shoe? Got to learn remember to tie a shoe. So first is just a twist over under.
Over. And we need another segment here to actually go under. This is challenging. Knots. There we go. Very close. Almost there. Just doesn't look clear enough. There is the first knot over under. And then each of these go off into a loop, their own loop. What do you do after that? Tie. Around. What's coming up from under wraps around. Okay. So this one will be the first loop. Like that. Go ahead and subdivide one more time. Here. So that we can bring these together. Oh, I got that wrong. Wait, now they both come. <laughs> Brain. Okay. Um. If there's like a add-on for Blender for knots, I don't think I'll need it for this, but that'd be interesting to know. This one actually needs to come around. Around. Is there a song for this? All right. I think I probably should have gone. Done this a little bit differently, but I beat myself up for it. Boom. Boom. That 
that'll be the other loop. This comes back through. This one. Let's one. Ah, okay, that's why I'm confused. Okay. <laughs> That was a fun exercise. All right, still looks like a mess, but technically that's how you tie a shoe. All right, now they're super dense. We do not need this much resolution. Just about right there is perfect. Proud of that, though. All right, now the other aspect for the shoelaces is that they are being pinned down. There are little straps, basically, keeping the shoelace in place. Now, I don't think I'll be able to do that. Without subdividing. So we'll wait to do that for the next step. Okay. Oh, up my neck. Oh, oh.
Now I'm just making sure all the meshes fit together nicely. All right, let's start pulling these apart. First thing to do, oops, mesh everything. So now we have applied the subdivision. We're going to select half of it, delete that half, and put the mirror mod back on. All right, now we're going to make some cuts. Thank you, Mark Seam. I prefer to run it down the back of the elbow. There we go. Then the coat itself. Separate the inside from the outside. They're not completely separated just yet. There we go. All right. Unwrap again. So here's our arm or sleeve. No. Grab that section, pin it, straighten. Let's pin it first. Pin it. Boom, boom. Now, we want to line them up.
Bada boom. Okay, so now we've lined up all edges on the sides. Let's actually go ahead and give the jacket. The UV texture. And we can see it very nicely lines up. Perfect. Just trying to straighten out the uh, jacket top as best we can. That's pretty good, actually. Let's move it out of the square onto the next piece. All right. So this is the front of the coat. Hmm. So a few different ways to do this. So we're gonna have to straighten the back edge. These spots here. Go ahead and put a cut right there so that it unfurls properly. Boom. Right. So certainly heading the right direction, but there's a lot to pick up here. Now I could cut the trim off completely. 
think I should. So it is still linked together, it must be down here. That's a bit easier to work with. All right, it's probably as good as that's going to get. I would like to straighten out the trim at the bottom because it's distorted here at least. This one's not terrible. This is not good though. Let's look at the actual fur trim first. Move that into position. There's the fur trim. Easy, nice, and contained. I like it. All right. Man, by the time I get to Friday, my pinky, the tip of my pinky is numb from hitting control and shift so often. <laughs>
next. So that helps straighten out the trim here, at least vertically. But these little spots are still quite no good. No bad. Figure out how to make the most of them. I think I'm going to remove this seam right here. That way we can just kind of straighten them like that. solve it, but it helps. Okay, this garment is done for now. Next one. Shirt, easy. First, we want to apply the ears. Okay, pretty straightforward.
That should work well for that set. Next, go here. I think I have to do this. But we did it anyway. And since it's a shirt, it's okay if that doesn't line up. Exactly. We just want it pretty darn close. All right, next garment, the shorts. one's also pretty straightforward. Before I do that though, yeah, this one's fine actually. Mark scene. Boom. -boom. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten. And straight. Boom. And do the same here. One, four, 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 five. Just this part. All right.
shorts, shorted, pantaloons, pretty much the same exact thing. Mesh them. Mirror. Cut down inside. Eight. Rotate. I think I'm going to try to make a script for lining up two edges. I bet with chat GPT, I could do that pretty quick. Cause I do this so often. It's like, if I think about the next two avatar that I make, a solid two hours of my work just be lining up seams. <laughs> uh, so let's see if we can do that. Great. A script or blender that takes two edge selections as input. It will then align them along the Y axis. Create a script for Blender that takes two edge selections as input. It will align the points in each selection Just put this up here. It will align the points in each selection based on which point in the selection is highest. Good script blender that takes two edge selects. All right, so let's, let's actually 
and the lines there for spotting points. It will align the points in each selection based on which point in each selection is the highest. For example, Sixty-eight selections. In the UV editor. It will align the points in each selection based on point. First, it will find the first pair. The first pair is the highest point on the y-axis of each selection. next pair will be the iterate through the selection first pair is a second the highest point on the y-axis of each selection Next pair and align their y, their position on the y axis. In the scripts, take two edge selections and put aligns their corresponding points on the y axis of the event. The first step is to find the highest point. Uh, yes, indeed, Albin, welcome. You have so many numbers on your name now. <laughs> welcome. Yeah, we're try I'm trying to make a script to align. 
points in my UV. Because right here, it's like I do this this thing all the time where I have two selections, they have the same amount of points, and I'm trying to align them. Always had those numbers though. Have you? I feel like you haven't. I could be wrong. And it's certainly a lot of numbers though. <sighs> Let's just try this. I mean, what, what could go wrong? Just keep adding numbers till the name was available. All right, let's make it back up. Wait. All right, we'll just try it. None type object has no attribute. Attribute new V. Pretty sure it does. Certainly does. Do, do, do. You can copy the error to chat GPT. Yeah, I think I will. Just trying to find where it's messing up right here. First pair. Let's try again. Alt P. So the first error is in line 31. Or no, I see. So this is the uh, function, and then it's calling the function here. Okay. Console. Why can't I copy that? I, I would like to copy this. Console. Attribute error. And I am getting and attribute error none type of no attribute you e This is example usage. I guess the real problem though is that I am not feeding in actual my actual selection. This is just example usage. Um,
new chat. Edit this script to automatically gather the edge selections from my current uh, editor selection. Slow, very, very slow. I should have said, <laughs> instead of edit, I should say create a function that gathers the edges. Because now it's going to re go through the whole thing from again when I just need it to make a function. But the problem here is that I'm feeding in this stuff. Which doesn't make sense. It's trying to treat them like objects. Come on, keep going, keep going, ChatGPT. All right. In the meantime, I'm just gonna try to do it myself. Yeah, actually, I think now that I'm thinking about this, it has to do things in a very certain order. It has to first get the get the selection. Then it needs to create an index of all of those points based on their current height. And then go through the index one by one, matching their y. Otherwise, it's not going to. If it recalculates every, the which one is the highest after moving it, then it will never work properly. It needs to create a little. It needs to figure that out first. There we go. All right, well, we've done it for now. And it's just stopped completely, so. <laughs> All right, I should be using Bing. Send me the prompt. I could ask it. Perhaps the European server is faster. Oh yeah, I'll send it to you. I don't. Ex I expect that it would take some time 
some like back and forth. Last time I made a script with it, it's like it would get some things right, but then it doesn't use certain things properly. So it took me about like an hour to make a script with it. Uh, my camera. Yeah, the goal is to get it to Here's here's the prompt. I think so. Lot of bull. Yeah, it, it was trying to regenerate the whole thing anyway, so starting from scratch will be about the same. Should be about the same. Favoritism. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think uh, Chat G or OpenAI is going to have a lot of reason to uh, slow down their their current service if uh, if they're working with Bing. It's like they're kind of undercutting Bing as a service. If they're still allowing to use Chat GPT, apparently the the Bing version is uh, actually GPT four. Which is pretty cool. Been a lot of hype about that the last few months. I wonder if they'd implement it into Visual Studio. I think it's coming for every anything you can put it in, they're gonna put it in. Because it's it's like like right now, as soon as it's available to anyone using Bing, anyone who uses Google is now gonna use Bing. And so like there's no brand loyalty with this kind of situation. It's like people are just looking for the better tool. And whoever comes out with the better version has has the audience. And it's just going to be this arms race of, oh, we, we made this better because we put ChatGPT into it. And we made this better because we put chat, another AI into it. And it, I, I don't see an end to that. I think just it will be an it'll be in unity it'll be in vr chat eventually um anything that it can be put into <laughs> it will be put into google does have lambda though perhaps they'd roll that out to compete with bing i think they'll have to i i do think that they will have to because it's just it's too good like Like Bing was not even a competitor with Google, uh, Google services until this. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, perfect. Get the two edge selections. That looks better. That definitely looks better. Um, I don't have a good, <laughs> a good example to use now, though. Uh, let's do a little test. Scripting, UV editor, new, UV find. Perfect. This selection and this selection. Scene object has no attribute edge selection. What? Scene object. Well, it's trying to get the trying to access the object. Let's see. Oh, I see. It's trying to get these selections as if they are a common attribute, but it needs to create them. It's kind of the same problem as last time, where um, so. If you want, I would ask to, right now it's trying to, um, like you'd want to ask it like something like dynamically or dynamically generate the selections, the two edge selections from the current UV map selection, something like that. Uh, or create a function to uh, create a function to dynamically generate. Like yeah, we have an underscore not safe <laughs> an underscore like a private variable declaration. <laughs> Just helps things. <laughs> Just keeps things nice and organized. Let's go ahead and apply the subdivision. This one will be interesting. I think we'll just, uh, we're actually not done modeling this one because we need to get the grooves on the shoe made. So one, two, three, four, five. And just a little more even spacing. Next we'll want we want these selections. That but just this part. And then we'll bevel three like that.
I just find bidding something private is declared like a private variable. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> uh, it's funny, just, you know, you don't even, I don't even think about how to name folders and stuff anymore because it's just like. You just get in that all these different habits of how you name certain things. All right. So this one, I saw the you set. Hmm. Doesn't seem to have changed much. Get the current UV map selection. Selected UVs equals UV. This might do it. Oops. Uh, I'm in that. Oh, I'll be. List has <laughs> list object has no action. Attribute UV. Hmm. What is the error again? This object has no attribute UV. So right here, it's trying to call these like lists. Or like it has a UV attribute. This UV doesn't matter. Because it's just a... It's declaring it right there for yeah, it's just hard to know because I don't know the the language of uh, blender very well. I'll have to mess around with that at a different time but um, cause, you know what's the proper way to access up uh, variables unsure. So you can layer some of the images I gave with these and change the opacity. Comparison or add them texture. Well, I'm glad I saved that. Uh, we need to clean up these little spots right here. Now, do I, I think it's actually best if they're all connected here. That's much more like the actual tread. Yeah, better, much better. Actually, just showing me that I should have um, beveled lower. 
definitely for this next segment right here. Uh, actually, let me think about that for a second. Most shoes have a very different tread. Those AI companies will have an arms race with each other and make dangerous stuff by accident. Um, yeah. It'll, it's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> For sure. I don't, you know, it's not like I'm excited to see AI uh, develop, um, but I think that no one or everyone shares a lot of concerns about exactly uh, how this, how well is all going to work. Um, I do think there's a lot of companies taking it very seriously, but certainly there will be some that don't. But currently, the uh, the seriousness is high. Excuse me. Uh, but even already, it's like people are using chat GPT to uh, make meth and make bombs. So, but at the same time, it's like that stuff you could have found online if you're really looking for it. It's like, sure, it's, it's a little easier for... Ooh. You know, it's, before you had to search for it, it's not like you have a virtual teacher that's telling you, oh, and then you cook the meth like this and, you know, all that jazz. <laughs> so there's certainly some nuance to be had there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's what I don't, Walter White GPT, exactly. <laughs> And then a lot of the, uh, like, there's a lot of AIs coming out right now that use voice really well, like, to the point where it can make really convincing, uh, it can clone your voice very convincingly within about three seconds of audio, um, decently convincing. And then the more you train it, the better it gets, of course. And it's like, that's, that's going to be pretty problematic like there's there's some concerns with that and me right off the bat <laughs> um But at the same time, it's like, like even what I was just doing right now with trying to make like a code and stuff, like I've learned more about coding, trying to use chat GPT than I have like looking up tutorial or whatever. Try uh, Adobe's voice enhancement AI it manages English pretty well, but when I asked it to clean up some Swedish audio, it made the people sound like they were having strokes. I couldn't understand them. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
But yeah, I, you know, the, it's going to be unbelievably wild what we live through. Like, there will be no other time like right now. The fact that we're alive right now when this stuff is coming into fruition is uh is pretty wild. <laughs> oh yeah. By a long shot. And it's just interesting that how much the, the tone of the conversation has changed. I think like when I was uh, the last like 10 years or so, you know, people always like talked about AI or like AI and this and that, but everyone like talked about it like it was really far off. <laughs> that is not no longer the case. Like people talk about it because it's happening in a, in a very direct and applicable way, which I think is good. Uh, I do think that relatively we're in a good spot as a species for this kind of thing to happen. Um, I think it's going to make a lot of what people already do a lot more valuable as humans. Like what we do as individuals will be a little bit more valuable because it's done by a human. Uh, but the nature of certain things will change dramatically. Entertainment. I mean, I think my my thought is that humanity is just going to fall in, in love with AI. Like deeply, intensely, and with that end, we are going to just love AI. <laughs> It'll be your best friend. It'll be the most entertaining thing you've ever done in your entire life, constantly. And it will always continually improve. Uh, obviously concerning in some ways, but in terms of an enriching life, I think that AI will provide that. Anyway, I'm just running right now. <laughs> Ignore me. I could talk about this forever. I mean, I can't wait to have an AI to do this part for me. Like, make make my IV map for me. Don't like the idea of AI creating media, though. If everything's AAA quality, then there won't be anything special about it. Everything will just be medi mediocre. Well. I don't I disagree because if that's the case then the only competitive edge in terms of interest is good story and making it compelling. Uh, like you look at video games over the last 10 years it's gone like I I think that the appreciation for really really good storytelling like Last of Us got a or games like that, uh, near Automata, those games really stand out in a lot of ways because they have compelling narrative or, uh, you know, everything looks great. Like the latest Call of Duty visually looks amazing, but like in terms of story, I, I, I think that most people don't play it for the story. <laughs> um, Even hard 
they're Call of Duty fans. Like they're not playing it for the story or the visuals. They're playing it because they like shooters. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I think that when it comes down to it, if everything looks just as good as everything else, then the only thing that sets it apart is how compelling it is. What's to say that I can't generate good stories? I also don't think it's fair to cut out all hardworking artists only value writers. It will go both ways, right? It's like AI as a tool will be, you're going to be using it for the things that you yourself wouldn't be doing. Like, I don't think that everyone becomes a writer. I think everyone becomes a director. It's like everyone has a team, AI. So it's still a personal vision if you do it correctly, not just like to like spam. Uh, it'll be interesting. I think there's a lot of different ways for it to unfold. Certainly there's going to be a lot of just stupid stuff because <laughs> that's just how it goes. Um, but in terms of, I, I, I personally think that the advent of AI makes artists only more valuable. It may change the nature of what employment looks like. That's certainly a concern. In terms of artistic value, it's like, I think just kind of exactly what you're saying. It's like, if, if every game looks as good as possible or visually as real as possible then all that sets it apart is how impactful it is and that's where artists do their best work is making impactful stuff you know it's not like some business guy is going to hop in there and make it he's only going to make what entertains him but in terms of like compelling other people i think that um anyway i could i, I do it will be interesting, to say the least. <laughs> um, but I think there will always be a place for art, artists, art and artists. But it will be chaotic and weird and wild. Let's unpin this one and then pin these. But even just like what I was doing just now, it's like knowing that I, with like making a script, like knowing that I can have good direction trying to enter a programming project allows me to do that kind of thing. It's like before I just would never touch it, right? Because you're basically going, oh man, I have to learn all this stuff in order to do it properly. So. And that's how some people view art. Like, oh, I'm a programmer and I don't, I don't do art, but I have this tool that generates things I like. It may not be the best, and the programming that ChatGPT generates may not be the best, but usable. There's certainly a pragmatic quality to it. Anyway, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> I will talk about it forever, so I just have to <laughs> make my mouth stop. Another cool tech news that I thought was pretty interesting. 
I don't know if you do a VR album, but uh, the Quest or Meta announced that the Quest will be able to do local multiplayer soon, which I thought was super interesting. Um, I don't really know what that exactly looked like, but that could be really cool. Like virtual dodgeball you could do or board games. I'm pretty pumped about that. All right, UV maps done. UV maps done. I had a VR headset once, but my GPU was too weak for me to use it. <laughs> That's a bummer. <laughs> One more object to create, and then I need to do some Photoshop stuff. And it's dancing like it's never danced before. There's a man in all right. Well, yeah, I think, uh, you know, if if you... The nice part about the Quest is you don't need a uh, computer. So it's like buying just the Quest would becomes way more compelling if you could go out and, like, you know, play Call of Duty in an open field. It's like cheap airsoft, you know, at that point. Um <laughs> I can see the injuries happening already. It'd still be fun. So I think that the best way to map sunglasses is simply to get a good selection, view, project from view. I did get to try my friend's VR headset once. He was the one made by TikTok. He has the one made by TikTok. That was sort of fun, but I had a hard time navigating. So that's definitely just getting your your uh, your sea legs, so to speak. <laughs> There's a there's a bit of a adjustment period. Dina 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 Dina
There we go. How's my drawing going? Oh, I haven't been doing too much other than uh, I did some some drawing here on my big old sketch pad. Mostly, this is odd to say. I've reached this point. Got a little house. It's like a tree house. <laughs> and then I don't know if I've showed you too much. If, if were you here last time I was showing this, uh, this off? And then we've got these dwarves. <sighs> a little hard to see. Just holding a little pairs of chest. Yeah. One stiff. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of, of sketches in my sketchbook. That's about it for the most part. Um, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I'll probably I'll try to take some photos of them and uh, post them soon. Um, so it's not this <laughs> very lightly sketched. It's it's very faint, even in real life. It's a little. It's very light on the page. So I, I tend to just very gently peck at the page. Um, <laughs> But I've actually been really enjoying using uh, grease pencil to draw because it's very easy to start animating things. Um, excuse me. Uh, which I love. I, I'm going to be doing a ton of that. So, when I went on the time. I have the opposite problem. I press too hard to the point where I can't erase. <laughs> but I, I bought these pencils. Um, uh, well, there's actually a specific one. This one. And I think it's helped a lot because it's just gigantic. So it's like, you, apparently, I didn't know these existed, but you can buy like just lead and then there's these holders for it because i've i've bought like these pencils before where it's like all graphite but then they actually have a holder for it which i have really enjoyed because then you can like it's just comfortable but making the page bigger and then using a bigger pencil has been really nice because um i also press very hard to the point where my hand, I just am in pain. <laughs> I have one of those. I've never used it though. I really like it. I, I think there's a, a lot of freedom in just like making it your drawing as big as you can, and just not not really caring. You know, it's like it's just gonna be huge. It's just gonna be a huge drawing. <laughs> But yeah, I was, uh, I was talking with one of my friends just how much my hand can hurt because I just push so hard when it's like a normal pencil. Usually I'm using like a, just as like a writing utensil, like very thin pens or pencils. Um, man, if you're doing that all day, it can really, really mess you up.
Let's actually take all the small items out. My stream lagging. Sometimes it gets really laggy when I'm using this. All right, that seems pretty good. Okay. I think I've asked for what got to 3D modeling. Uh, um, well, I have no problem answering. I, I do know if you've asked before, but I also will. <laughs> will uh, I don't I don't mind telling it at all. Uh, the uh, I did uh, concept art for a few years. I, so I went to school to learn um, painting for. I wanted to do concept art um, for video games and stuff, and I kind of did that for some small studios after college. Um, just in my time learning concept art, I uh, ended up learning a lot of Blender because it was just very convenient to like pull things out with with uh, with Blender and just kind of set things up. And it just got to the point where I realized that I had more fun in a professional capacity. I still love drawing the most out of all the things I do. Um, physically drawing, but in terms of like professional enjoyment, I really prefer uh, doing 3D modeling over concept art. Um, I just found that it is a lot nicer of a job. <laughs> I understand there isn't much draw that much drawing and concept art nowadays, mostly photo bashing. And I'm sure uh, AI is kind of entering that equation as well, um, for better or worse. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think, and I found that I just. Uh, when it comes to like painting and drawing, or no, a painting and drawing is fine. I like commissions for painting and drawing. When it comes to concept art, it becomes really difficult depending on the employer you have because they're generally looking for the cheapest bidder and they're, they don't treat concept art in the right way. It's like, hey, this is a possibility or like searching for ideas like we need to have it nailed down with this piece of concept art and they're looking for like something super exact but also they don't want to pay that much and it just becomes this kind of awful situation where they're <laughs> demanding too much and paying very little uh, And it's super competitive, extremely competitive. I think it kind of hit like a viral quality in a way, where it's like one of those things where there was a lot of people teaching it online and creating this culture of uh, accessibility, which isn't a problem. That's not a bad thing. But it just ended up with a lot of people trying to do it all at once, which means like, like if you go onto Fiverr and look up like concept art, so like there's people willing to do concept art for nothing, basically, relative to a wage I would need to survive. For them, it, it might be a very good good wage. Um, anyway, 
<laughs> Suffice to say, I really enjoy 3D modeling and working in VR chat is super cool, super fun. That's a great community. Um, and uh, I think that just being in the VR space is a good spot to be uh, if you're looking to be creative. Even if you were doing, I mean, whatever you're doing, I think it's a good spot to be in because there's only going to be more interest as time goes on. More people are trying to, or looking to explore it. What what do you do, Alvin? Are you are you looking to get into uh, uh, 3D modeling? I I, for, I think you've shown me your portfolio at some point. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about that before. My goal is to live off art commissions, but AI kind of killed that, so now I don't really know. I'm currently at art school, though. Okay, heck yeah. Um, I think that it's still possible. Um, and I wouldn't worry about that in a sense of like, you know, you definitely want to be able to adapt and make a living, but in the, in the, in the societal context of, Oh, this AI might be coming for my job. I mean, everyone, I literally every, that will have to be everywhere. So I don't know, like, how hard do you pivot when you see something like that? Because by the time you pivot to something else, you'll be in the same situation. Um, I think that if you get a following, you can do whatever you want. That's It's really just that simple. Like, for me, I, I have a very niche... Uh, product well VR chat avatars and there's a high demand in that niche world for it but you know if you get a hundred thousand followers you can do whatever you want <laughs> uh, pretty much uh, so I think that maybe commissions might be difficult but if you find a way to get a following based on the art you're doing make a comic I mean I I'm not here to give you suspicious advice but there are a lot of a lot of people online that make living doing not safe for work art or um that, that's not necessarily a direct suggestion just that you can see what if you look online you can see what's possible for yourself um because there are people doing it which is cool uh you know even just streaming, it's like I don't I don't take streaming super seriously in terms of like I'm not here to like I need to get as many followers as possible. Um, but genuinely, like I see a lot of artists on Twitch and uh, that have reached a point of sustainability because they've they've made it a really good Twitch streaming experience. Um, think about that too. I used to work as a programmer, but that was really unfulfilling. So I don't really want to go back to that. Understandable. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, you look at like programming, it's like the idea that AI might be become this competitive factor in like programming's in a similar spot to that as, as art. So yeah, long term, I think we're all going to be riding this wave together. But uh, I also think that just looking at what people are doing right now, uh, you can find, you can definitely find a spot for yourself. Um, like, you're looking to do art commissions? I see tons of people on VR Chat Traders, which is where I find a lot of work, looking for designs for their characters. It's like, 
Sure, you could use AI for some of that, but generally a person, human's going to give you a better design. Um, yeah. Anyway. All right, I need to do some Photoshop shenanigans. Let me pop that open really quick. But it's going to be an interesting, wild world. You know, one thing about art that I really didn't take seriously enough was that a lot of the times artists do art for artists. And that's the biggest problem. It's like if you can find a way to really appeal to just anyone like a normal person like especially like go a hundred a hundred percent away from trying to appeal to other artists and you will find a lot of work like like i genuinely think that if you ha are good at life drawing uh, or like doing portraits let's say if you just sat in a public like downtown or a cafe or something and put out a little sign like hey forty dollars for a portrait it's like you would probably make a full-time living because it's something that normal normal people, I don't know why I'm saying it, like normal people, non-artists, people who are non-artistic. The appeal of art to non-artists is way bigger than we give it credit for. Um, I think a lot of the time, at least personally, when I'm like, oh, like, hey, you know, I'm here to, to show off, like, I, I try to, I know that a lot of people in my life, like in terms of family and stuff, don't really quite get what I do because um, they're not quite artistic. And so there's there's a definitely a dissonance there, which I think kind of starts that, that conception that, oh, like, hey, I, I have to meet other artists and I have to make them like my stuff. But the reality is that there are tons of just day, normal people <laughs> I don't know how else to put that normal people that absolutely love what you do. And you just, you're, you're real. The real challenge is just finding the people that like what you do. It's not about being the best or this and that. It's just about finding people that love your shit. I don't like to crap on other artists, but I've seen some fairly bad free artists make a lot of money solely due to their subject, their artistic skill. Well, even like, even like without the comparison of like quality, if you think of most comic book artists, like when you're making a comic, you can't afford to make every drawing the best it can be. It's like you have to do, it's the quality comes from the fact that you do a hundred drawings in a certain amount of time. And when put together, that's where the quality comes from. But you know, it's like uh, there's that web comic that you're specifically mentioning, uh, furry artists. There's that web comic Two Kinds, uh, which is made by, <laughs> funnily enough, Markiplier, um, Markiplier's brother, which I learned recently. <laughs> and the art's okay. You know, it it does what it does really, really well, but it's not necessarily like mind blowing. Um, but certainly there, there are more accomplished artists out there. But he fed his audience, you know, that, and that's what made him successful. And he, he is quite successful. Um, he found the right people to appreciate his work. And that's what made the difference. More more ranting from Sam. <laughs> uh, I became familiar with Kenichi Sonata. That sounds familiar. Master drawing cars and guns. I was shocked to find out he's motion animates toy cars. <laughs> I mean, heck yeah, a hundred percent. I I have there is no shame in that game, um, because. 
the again, like when you set your idea of what good is, when you set your idea of what quality is based on what other artists are saying, it easily becomes endless where every aspect of your work has to be astounding, amazing. When the reality is just that, I'm sorry, I have to export something really quick. The reality is just that uh, what matters the most is the goals you set and doing those the best. Like for him, he needs to draw, you know, if he's, if he's doing animation or if he's doing uh, comics or whatever, he's like, okay, I have to draw this card a thousand times. What's the fastest way I can do that? Are becoming complacent and stagnant. Learning is always important, but you'll always be learning if what you're doing is challenging. It just doesn't have to be. You just need to recognize what a good comparison is or what growth really means. Because, and I'm, I'm really just speaking from my own personal. Uh, challenges because I I spent a long time spinning my wheels because I didn't really know what I wanted and it's okay that's okay you don't really have to know exactly what you want but you do need to find what's healthy and repeatable <laughs> you know it's like for me doing concept art just was not something I could do all the time I I could not. It didn't pay enough. It wasn't healthy. Uh, you know, the, the, even the idea of stagnation probably comes from what other people have said. That idea that uh, I'm going to, to stagnate or, or become complacent. It's like that might be a preconception that other people have incepted, you know, inception style into you. But the reality is, like, if you're doing something you're passionate about every day, that's not complacency. That's not stagnation. That is the exact opposite of it. And even still, you might meet people that shit on you or, you know, like, find try to find some way to get under your skin about what you're doing. But if you're enjoying it and it, you feel that it's challenging, then you're doing good. <laughs> It's it's all personal. Um, yeah, it's like I think animation's really interesting and in comics because because it sets a better goal than just doing the best drawing. And I'll, I'll, I keep, I've personally kept coming back to looking at those because it's like, or, or you think of a video game, right? I'm making 3D models. It's like, if I want to make a video game, it's not about all the individual pieces. It's about how they come together. Um, so, anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm just trying to... I, I can easily launch into a tirade about that just because it's a thing I, I care about a lot. No, please go on. I appreciate your advice. Very interesting. Well, good. Okay, I definitely can go on. <laughs> I just don't want to, to burn out at all. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, screenshots, screenshots. There we go. Oh, I didn't save them. Um, yeah, I think one, like, and a good example of something that for me felt very powerful that I think that um, like a lot of artists might shit on or just like look down on. 
um, was auto automatic drawing. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, where it's like you don't draw with any goal. You just draw like you're like purely doodling. You're just doodling. You don't have an image in your head, just putting your pen down, following your, your line work around um, and seeing what kind of shapes come out. That exercise, even though it had no particular goal and it's like, I, I didn't like it initially because, because of that, because it didn't have a particular goal, proved to be super, super valuable um, when, when it came to my drawing. Because it just taught me what shapes I make on my own. It's like, you know, what you every everyone has their muscle memory that they're using. And uh, you know, doing that just because it was somewhat easy to do. <laughs> uh, and I didn't have to put a lot of thought in it, into it, still was probably one of the most valuable things and still continues to be one of the most valuable things I do. But like, if you put it in the idea of like, it being the most profound thing I do, or like the context of trying to get ahead or having to be more hireable or something, like it's hard to, I never would have approached that at all if if those were my only criteria. I do tend to find I get better results doing that as opposed to overthinking everything and losing sight of what I'm doing. 100%. You know, anxiety and uh, fear are, <laughs> does that Dune quote, fear is the mind killer? It's super true for art. Like, if you just feel uncomfortable with what you're doing, feel uh, like, a lot of positions I've been in when doing concept art, it's like, I know that the client is unhappy with what I'm doing. And like, that sucks. It really slows slows down your decision making. And generally, you end up doing just worse work than you would have even otherwise. It's like, it, it slowly, it deteriorates your ability to uh, make good work. Um, but again, in turn, and like, you know, a lot of what I was looking at in the past of like getting ahead, pushing myself, and you get into this mindset of what is good, what is bad for, for what you're doing. Is this a good thing to do? Oh, this has to be a, then this, if it's not a good thing, then it's a bad thing. And I have to get to the good stuff, the best stuff as quickly as possible. Uh, but if you stick with that forever, you're just going to burn out. Really what it comes down to is like, what is the healthiest way? Like the only criteria in what you do, and this is true for more than just art, the only criteria for what you should be doing is, is it healthy? Like, because that means not only can you keep doing it, <laughs> but you're probably going to get better at it. <laughs> uh, if it's not healthy, like your approach to art isn't healthy, then eventually you will not be able to do it, which is what I, I found for myself. Is that the more I just pushed past my own comfort zones, endlessly the the more <laughs> the more difficult it became and and you know like the nebulous idea that oh, I have to be the best eventually gets beaten out by the thought of what do I actually want to do? Yeah, is this is this nice too? Do I like this? Um, yeah, those, those eventually went out over just. I have to be the best. Okay. 
Take screenshots, do comparison. Because that's what it's like when you only have other people as your other artists specifically as your reference point. Man, how am I going to overlay this directly? Especially when you're on like YouTube and stuff, because it's just like <laughs> you're only looking at the absolute best of the best. Like it's not a healthy comparison. Um, I don't think it being the best of my goal. I just wanted to be decent. I always thought that of that Utah Phillips quote, make a living, not killing. <laughs> uh, well, good. It, it's it, even if you don't have um, that goal of being the best, certainly it can play into itself with the idea of um, you know, being higher up. Like, oh, I have to be, you know, I have to do commissions because then I'll get the job at the company that I want to work at. It's like, I have to be doing one or the other. So if you're in a position where your portfolio isn't getting you in the door at the place that you want to work at, it would be better. What, what I would have done instead for myself is I would have just worked minimum wage job and used all my free time to study. And I wouldn't have worried about getting commissions because that would be the fastest way to grow. Um, you know, if, if you're constantly trying to get hired, uh, it, it lends itself to that same feeling of, oh, I have to be better or oh, I have to have to keep pushing or, you know, it's just unhealthy. Better to be, be a financially stable, stable in health and uh, continue to put time into art. Uh, especially because I, I really, one thing that I really shot myself with the foot in, in my foot with time and time again was taking on work that just did not pay enough. It's like, I genuinely, even though I had a commission, I would have been, ad, it would, my life would have been a lot better not getting that commission. Because it's like, oh cool, someone paid me $100 to do this painting. It was like, oh, it took a week. It's like, if you do the math on that, it took a week to do this $100 painting that I put 40 hours into, $100 divided by 40, is not that much. Like I'm, it's basically two fifty an hour. Like, where in America, where or where I live, uh, in the Texas and stuff, I think the minimum wage is roughly fifteen dollars an hour. It's like, <laughs> like you, that's a that is a, a starved, starving wage. I used to think getting commissions was the seal of quality. Like when people were prepared to pay for your work, that's when you know you're good. But I've come to find people mostly care about the subject matter. Oh yeah. Especially with um, like initial commission type work, it's like, like people are hiring you because they they don't have the time or the skills to realize something that they want. Um, you know, and for better or worse, that's a thing. You know, I frankly, I I uh, <laughs> I I did a lot of commissions in college. Um, like, a lot of suggestive work and um, all of those were just things other people wanted, right? It's like, if they, if they didn't get you to get what they wanted, then they wouldn't have fired you. Whereas, you know, you look at really well-to-do artists or really high quality artists, they've pushed their art to the point where just their, them doing whatever they're doing, like the quality of the work they do by themselves, people would simply want to perpetuate that. They would pay that artist just to do 
whatever the heck they're doing because they found their follow followers they're the people who want to see them keep doing that thing. um <laughs> again all it really comes down to is finding your audience um and you can never like for me like i was saying it's like i have a really small audience in the sense of just people who want vr chat avatars in the scope of things that's a very small um, and it's, it's just on a commission basis uh It's it's an interesting world. I certainly wish you well entering the art world, and you're feel free to ask me any questions anytime regarding getting into it. Um, uh, it can be painful. It can be very painful. Um, but I think that a lot of that just comes from not having a good support network. So if you ever need advice or, you know, anything like that, feel free to reach out. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get this boy rigged. Since you are in college, the big one of the biggest advantages of college is networking, and I don't mean networking like your classmates. Um, if there are programs at your school that work with companies, or some connections you can make from school to a company, definitely take advantage of that. Uh, as long as it's taking you the direction you want to go. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, we'll make a rig right now. on the teeth yet in tongue i'll have to remember that i'll have to write that down actually Merge now, yeah, yeah, might as well. Well, I don't have a mirror on this one. That's fine. Worst case scenario. Well, take that back. So we're going to duplicate the head. We'll say head OG. I'll hide that. And we'll call this head mirrored. Mirrored. Yeah, we're going to do exactly that. I'm going to take face. Do you have any goals that you'd like to achieve? Definitely. Um, yes. I would love to make some animations. Um, a lot of my passion behind learning to make CG characters is because I don't want to do hand animation 
to an animation. It's like, I would like to be able to make, uh, you know, puppets, armatures, uh, CG characters, and then make animations with them. It's kind of a struggle because there's still a lot I've, needed to learn behind the scenes for animation specifically. Uh, but I'm much closer than I was in the past. Uh, pretty much right at a, a new precipice, but I want to make some animation. So that's that's my main main kind of goal. It's like I'd love to be able to like tell some stories. Um, and other uh, alternatively also using VR chat avatars to do something like Dungeons and Dragons would be really, really cool. Um, I think that would be really phenomenal because um, I think that just as a as a space, there is a lot to that could be done there. Um, you know, you look at things like Critical Role; they're huge animations. Have you seen that Rokoko motion capture AI? You can record yourself with your camera and it converts it into animations. You can retarget on your models. I have not I have seen um I've seen some people talking about that online. Uh I've used some AI um what's the word for that? Yeah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. uh <laughs> video to mocap AI. Uh, I've used some of those before, and it's pretty cool. I do think that that is definitely the future of uh, motion capture, 100%. 100%. Um, at least for indie studios or for, for the stuff I want to do, 100% uh, useful. Because it's just like, I don't have to think about it. I just go in, take take a video of some sort. Uh, and whoop well, bam you know I'm, I'm pretty much already there uh, yeah I, I did um, <laughs> I did actually take a TikTok <laughs> video <laughs> And uh, and I ran it. There's another one, another mocap thing called Plask, P L A S K, and uh, that's what I've I've been using. It was okay, but uh, okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna cut the top. That'll be a little easier. Oh. And we'll do another cut here. But uh yeah, I can show you really quick. Let me load that up. TikTok test. That sounds right. So I have my one of the avatars I've made recently, and uh, I, drew, I took this dance from TikTok. <laughs> it's it's kind of goofy looking, but uh, I want to do some like promotional stuff. Uh, that's slow. Now let's go back to this. It's a little too slow, guys. But I don't. I don't really. I just grabbed a random video. Some stupid thing. <laughs> um, can't really say that I'm a fan of that dance in particular. But yeah, to, so my general plan is to like keep learning doing VR chat avatars and then slowly do more and more to promote them. Uh, like, I mean, exactly what you saw, which is little dances and stuff. 
TikTok isn't really known for their refined taste. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, should I apply that subdivision now? Yes. Do, 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 do. All right, there we go. Now we can auto repro smart. Yeah, uh, the really interesting thing in comparison between like 2D and 3D work is like if you're doing drawing to animate. It's like you could pretty much just jump in and do it. It's like even if you just had paper, you could make an animation. But when it comes to um, 3D stuff, there is just so much to learn. And like, it's a lot of pitfalls to this kind of thing. pitfalls in the sense of just like dead ends um, which you know that that's what it is just not everything is a good use of your time when it comes to CG work anyway yeah so I, that's kind of my goal. Uh, you know, I'd love to make some games eventually. I have made little Unity games before. Uh, nothing nothing really worth sharing. But uh used to make horrible TF2 animations in Blender back in the day. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's... When it's fun, it's fun. And making... TF2 animations is fun. Yeah, it's like, I, you know, I keep going like, oh, you know, I like animating in, in with 3D stuff. You know, that's that's doable. I enjoy it. But then I'd always be like, and I just, and then I'll just make a custom character for it. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> one month later, having made when I was first doing this, just having made some goofy looking guy, like I did it. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> but, uh, but that was kind of the, the thought process at, at the back of my mind. Or what, what, what I keep coming back to that pushes me is like Oh, and then I could make a little animation, um, which, and I end up learning something new out of it. And then I get tired, so I kind of like stop thinking about it. And then I, the next time I come back to that same thought, I know a little bit more and I go a little bit further down the road and just rinse, repeat, do that for a few years and. A little, know a little bit of stuff, but <laughs> there's certainly always more to learn with this kind of stuff. It just never really ends. VR chat keeps changing, which I have no problem with. It, need, it needs more features than it currently has. Um, Blender keeps changing. Again, totally fine with that. A lot of features it's missing or could use. Um, oh, we want the. This should only have three bones for the spine. Yeah, one fun stuff like. 
um, you know, talk about making animations and stuff. Uh, I figured out how to get motion capture data 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 out of uh, VR chat, which is pretty cool. Um, and I do think that that is pretty powerful um, because you know if you had a few people and you're trying to do like a purely indie CG movie, um, VR chat's a great platform because you get it all you get everyone in the same spot, the same space, looking at the same stuff and reacting to it in real time for the most part. Um, data <laughs> living in the south starting to affect you. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. That's what, which bone is this? Uh, I do say y'all a lot more often. There we go. All right, that's looking pretty good. Oh. Oh. But I do think that, especially with this AI stuff coming out, it's like, Indie animation is going to change intensely. Like there's Joel Haver, if you're familiar with Joel Haver. It's like he uses EB Synth, which is an AI tool or algorithm for uh, doing rotoscoping. Um, and a lot of his fame came from that. He's like a comedian, YouTuber, comedian guy. <coughs> But uh, yeah, kind of. I want to. I want to do shows like animations. Um, I certainly don't have a budget to hire people, but with AI, I could probably get pretty far with uh, making interesting things. Ooh, at least something funny. I, and I think that, you know, just to go on a AI fueled rant again, but like for what artists will do with all these tools. It's like worst case scenario. Oh, that's not good. Go ahead and just open this. I think the problem is, though, that with everyone be able to make animations, Mark will get flooded with stuff, and it'll become a matter of who has the most money for marketing instead of who could create the highest quality product. You, I mean, the thing is, is things are already at that point. Like, even without AI, that's still the, it's still the same problem. I don't think that, personally, I don't think marketing's the end all be all, but it's like there more there's more content on YouTube every year than there ever has been content on YouTube. It's like you know, if you look at books, more books are produced every month than people can read. But still popular ones come out of that. Good ones come out of that. Just as you, you, you're you viewing it through the lens of an artist, which is how do I get my work out there? 
But on the other side of that river, on the other side of that canyon, is a consumer going, how do I find work I care about? And those people work just as hard as artists to connect. You know, people are coming at that problem from both sides of like, I want to find YouTubers that actually make videos like, you know, um, there's a lot of, a lot of streams on Twitch. Um, and for me, I really like Critical Role because it really appeals to like the things I care about. Certainly there's a lot of Dungeons and Dragons streams on Twitch. Um, but you know, like that Critical Role is popular for some good reasons. Um, for anyway, I, I think that's already there, even without AI. Entertainment has already passed some threshold of uh, amount. <laughs> There's just so much all the time. Anyway, it's like there there are more movies on Amazon that you will never watch because you don't like them than the myths we will be alive. Just if you stacked up all those movies, all the movies ever made that wouldn't mean anything to you anyway. Just right now, that already is an ungodly number of, of amount of time. Uh, but still, the things you like still find their way to you. Um, I get in there. That one works. Just this one arm. No, it's something with a driver, it's not the... Okay, now it works. Okay, so it's just something. The slider still working. All right, perfect. But you shouldn't do things you really like with the intention of it being the most popular thing. You should just do things you like simply because you do them. Sure, the market's already oversaturated without AI. People who care will be set apart from the lazy people by the quality versus best effort. Like you can tell someone just made an ass flip game now versus a custom made game, but that won't be the case with AI. I disagree because if you had sent screenshots of ass fit games to yourself as a kid, you're like this is what games will look like in the future, and you don't tell them that it's an asset flip. It would still be the most mind-blowing image that that child has ever seen because they don't have filters we have built up to know that it's low quality. To them, they would just see something that looks amazing. But because the very nature that becomes so oversaturated, we develop better intuitions on what good is what what is good what is quality we are built to filter that kind of stuff out i think that being said personally what my concern with it, with ai is not that there will be too much stuff but that the what we look for out of entertainment will change a lot with when you have an ai it's like right now you still need a person to make it, <laughs> to make the AI experience. But within 10 years, you could, I could sit with an AI and tell it the kind of experience I want. And it won't be about making a movie or making an animation. It'll be more like, especially the VR headset, you're just like, I want to have this kind of experience. It becomes an extremely personal 
experience. I think more than anything, like <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I view a lot of stuff on Stable Diffusion on Reddit, and it's like a lot of people who are pushing into Stable Diffusion with the idea that, oh, now I can make anything. It's like at the end of the day, it still takes a lot of effort for them to make something which surprises and astounds them, which gives them that feeling of like, wow, that wow factor. But an artist with AI is going to make things that blow people's minds all the time. It it still pushes that idea of good further than just AI alone or just a novice with AI. Artists with AI will make genuinely mind-blowing stuff. Uh, and and if you imagine the scale of it where it's like, like, I think that in the future it'll be like, you wouldn't even need to appeal to everyone. Like, you could have a group of 100 people that you know personally that you are making a personalized experience for them. As an artist, you're like, you guys pay me $200 uh, a week, right? And I make the coolest shit for you that you've ever fucking seen. <laughs> you know? It's like, like, a, like a dungeon master uh, with, with d and It's like, it, just the, the opportunities kind of continue to unfold. With it. Anyway, I'm ranting. I don't mean to tire you out with that. <laughs> with this ranting about AI and stuff. I do think that it's concerning and that people have to be aware of how things are changing. But the opportunity to make cool stuff will always be there. And that's what people really care about. It just changes what I mean, look at, look at Marvel movies. Like, like, there's the show The Boys that came out recently, which is a superhero show. And it was watched way more than any of the Marvel stuff that's come out recently, which is, you know, top of the line visuals, this and that. But The Boys, which has less visual quality, still was watched way more, became more popular because it's simply because it's doing what they're not doing. <laughs> it's that contrast. Anyway, I'm I'm ranting. I'm also very hungry. And it is 5 p.m. for Sam. So I think I will be ending the stream here. But I do, I really had a lot of fun talking with you, Albin. Um, I know that I can get kind of ranty, so I hope that's not off-putting. <laughs> but I certainly have enjoyed discussing this with you. Because it is 100% something I think about all the time. Um, and uh, I'm sure I'll have a lot more opportunity to think about it moving forward as well. Uh, yeah, Albin. Oh, Vegas, if you're still there, thank you for coming by earlier. And Oaks, if you're hanging out still, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for the stream. And no, it's not putting off putting at all. Joy here opinions. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I start really sharing them. <laughs> this, is, this is my my passion. <laughs> I love that. I love talking about that specific kind of stuff. I appreciate all the advice you give me. Hey, no, no problem at all. I definitely uh, relate to uh, being uh, where you're at. So. Anytime you have advice, feel free to hit me up on Discord and stuff. But yeah, but for now, I will go ahead and call it an evening. Happy Friday to everyone who's out there. Thank you for tuning in to my stream. I hope you have an amazing rest of your Friday and a great weekend. I'll be back Monday for rat finishing up Gracken here and uh, a new avatar as well. Yeah, Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.